Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful Victor Herbert operetta, Babes in Toyland, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest star, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. The same railroads that bring you the finest in safe, luxurious, all-weather transportation at the price you can afford. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, what do you know? It's the Easter season. So we're going back to the storybook days. To the days of remember when? Days of once upon a time. When you've grown up, my dear, and are as old as I, you'll often ponder on the years that roll so swiftly by. have you meet some of the celebrated citizens of Toyland, though they're really probably old friends of yours. So, fellow citizens, forward march. May we present Miss Hood, first name Red Riding. Lovely child, very devoted to her grandmother. That's our friend Peter over there. That boy has a mad passion for pumpkin pie. And looky there, simple Simon. And Miss Muffet, who doesn't care a bit for spiders. Why, there's Tom Tom, the piper's son. And little boy Blue, boy farmer. Well, grab your trumpet, Mr. Blue. And that's all. Forward, march! <laughs> well, now, say, who's crying? Why, it's little Bo Peep. What's the What seems to be the trouble? You haven't gone and lost those sheep again. Oh, 
sheep don't cry. To find your sheep, we'll try. We'll seek them far. We'll seek them wide. We'll seek them low and high. That's better. Look, Bo Peep, there's no use worrying. Never mind, Bo Peep, we will find your sheep, no matter where they be. So be gay, Bo Peep, go astray your sheep, soon home again you'll see. Give a smile, Bo Peep, for a while your sheep may cruise in pastures new. Never mind, Bo Peep, we will find your sheep and bring them home to you. Good afternoon, my dear, dear fellow citizens of Toyland. Mary, Mary, how are you, Mary? I'm quite well, thank you, considering I'm so contrary. Dear Mary, have you had any word from Alan and Jane? No, Tom Tom. Their wicked Uncle Barnaby says they've both been lost at sea. Oh, oh not And not if it's true. true, then I'll never see my beloved Alan again. Golly, Mary. It looks as if you'll have to spend the rest of your life teaching arithmetic. Oh, and everybody knows what a dreadful thing arithmetic is. It's so everlastingly dull. Two and two just always seem to equal four. But I'll give it some variety. If a steamship weighed a thousand pounds and sailed five thousand miles, with a cargo large of overshoes and carving knives and files, if the mates were almost six feet high and the boats were near the same, would you subtract or multiply to find the tried to have us killed at sea. And he won't hesitate to have us killed here. You think he'll recognize me disguised as a gypsy fortune teller? I don't recognize you, Alan, and you're my own brother. Oh, look, a gypsy fortune teller. Perhaps he can tell me about my own true love. Fortune teller? Yes, my pretty. What is your name? Floretto. Floretto who flirts with the future. Will you tell my fortune? Give me your hand. Ah, such a, a pretty hand. So soft. Ah, yes, I can read the entire future. For I am a Romany Rye, a timorous sprite of the wild wood. I dabble in magic, both comic and tragic, oh, which I have been from my childhood. Great is my mystical mind, 
a blizzard and avalanche mind me. I'm likewise a voodoo at casting a hoodoo. A qualified artist, you'll find me. Coretto, Coretto, the gypsy am I. The past or the future to tell you I'll try. Your fortune now read from your palm at a glance. Rain notice I also collect in advance. Coretto, Coretto, the gypsy is me. Far into the future, in great we can see. Your fortune I'll read from. I'll be glad to pay you in advance, Senor Floretto. How much will you charge me? Oh, uh, a kiss. Oh, dear. Now tell me, what do you read in my palm? Your name begins with uh, an M. That's right. It's not Methuselah, or Mahidable, or Marmaduke, or Minahaha. <laughs> no, I have it. It's Mary. You're wonderful. Well, I always thought so. Oh, uh, now let me see. Oh, you should marry a chap whose name begins with uh, an A. Alan. He's charming, gifted, and attractive. To know him is to love him. Oh, but he's dead and will never come back to me. What's happening here? Barnaby! I will not have gypsies wandering around giving Coyland a bad name. Shoo! Shoo! You'd better be careful where you put your shoe. Besides. I have an important announcement to make. I have decided to marry the lovely, though sometimes contrary, Mary. Oh, no. Mary. But, Barnaby, aren't you a little, well, uh, old for me? Certainly not. Uh, be besides, Barnaby, I'm, uh, well, I'm in love with somebody else. With Alan? Uh, but he's been lost at sea. He's asleep with the oysters. Makes me feel like I'm swimming in tartar sauce. I have positive proof that he will never return. Oh, no. I'm in love with somebody new. With, um, uh, with, uh, 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 Barney O'Flynn. Mary? Who is Barney O'Flynn? Oh, Tom, Tom, I can't marry that old ogre Barnaby. So I just made him up. He's a lad from County Clark. The wild ones come from there. And be sure it is in his Girls, he cast a spell. Oh, I know that very well. For between us, from that spell, I am not free. There's no pallid in the land could his eloquence withstand. Should he speak to her as he has told to me? Of me since we have taken two. Both faith, Roy and Helen, and Venus excelling, they'd never hold a rush like to you. Jane. She's fallen in love with some county Clare Casanova named O'Flynn. What are we going to do, Alan? You must leave here, dear sister, and never return. Leave Torland? I have nothing more to keep me here. Mary is in love with somebody else, and Uncle Barnaby might try to kill us. He found us here. I'll go with you. Goodbye, Torland. Goodbye forever.
We return in just a moment for Act Two of Babes in Toyland. Before this week is over will come the exciting moment millions of us have anxiously awaited for many months. Across the land, from the nation's capital to the Golden Gate, from the Canadian border to the Gulf Coast, will roll the thrilling and familiar command... And these timetables, reflecting the railroad's characteristic flexibility, make allowances for the exciting possibilities of extra inning games, suddenly arranged doubleheaders, and other unpredictable features. By now, the railroads are all set to play ball with your favorite team, ready to provide a safe, comfortable, dependable home on the road for players, managers, trainers, sports writers, and fans. Minor league teams, of course, also travel a great deal by train, and for the same reasons. Dependability of service and safety are paramount considerations. Add to that the unequaled convenience afforded by comfortable sleeping accommodations and dining car service en route, plus the comforts and opportunity for restful relaxation after a hard game. And you have the reasons why most of the big league ball players depend on the railroad to carry them through their grueling 154-game schedule. They are, after all, the same reasons why you choose the railroads. For your vacation, business, and pleasure travel. For dependability, comfort, and safety, you can't beat the nation's number one form of transportation, the railroads. is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Victor Herbert's musical fairy tale, Babes in Toyland, starring Gordon MacRae as Alan and Lucille Norman as Contrary Mary. When Jane and I left Toyland never more to return, we went to a distant land. We found work in a spot that was the closest thing to the real toy land we love so much. The shop of the master toy maker. And we tried to forget our troubles in the busy preparation for Christmas. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Every toy must be ready in time for Christmas. See that all the music boxes play on key. Good, good. See that every mama doll says mama. Good, good. <laughs> After all, we wouldn't want a mama doll to say papa. Yes, well, I guess just about everything is ready for Christmas. Yes, sir. Everything's ready. Hail to Christmas, joyous Christmas. Be gay, the day draws near. Hail to Christmas, joyous Christmas. Be gay. We have a new sales lady, a recent arrival in these parts. Her name is Mary. Mary Q. Contrary. Oh, Jane, did 
you hear that? Yes, Alan. What do you suppose she's doing here? You must hide until we find out. You get in that packing box, and I'll just stand here and pretend to be a wooden soldier. Ah, here comes our new sales lady now. Welcome, Miss Conferry. Thank you, Master Toymaker. And now, you are to be in charge of all the dolls. Have a look around the stock. You'll find quite a variety of them. Oh, thank you. Oh, how beautiful they all are. Dolls of all nations side by side on the same shelf. What a beautiful world that makes. Hello, little Norwegian doll. Hello, little Dutch doll with the pigtails and the wooden shoes. And this one, a British doll. Do you say Mama Dolly? Me, too. Oh, yes. And here's a French doll. Do you say Mama, too, little one? Oui, oui. Oh, if Alan were not lost to me, we might have had such beautiful dolls of our own. And each night I would have sung lullabies to them. on his chest. I'll sew some on him. Oh, oh, no, I forgot. He's a wooden soldier. Well, I'll just nail them on to him. Uh, uh. Oh, dear. I wish you weren't wooden. I wish you were, Alan, so I could tell you how much I love you and how I ran off from that wicked Barnaby and how I had to make up a sweetheart named O'Flynn to stay out of the old man's clutches. You made him up? <gasps> he talks! Mary! It's me, Alan. Alan? Is it really Alan? Mary, I'll never leave you again. But wait, you're sure there's nobody named O'Flynn you love? Oh, never, never. Darling, you know, there's one test of true love. The toys. The toys? Everybody knows that a toy is only worth something when there's a child to love it. Otherwise, it might just as well be wood and cloth and buttons. That's why toys always know when there's love around, especially at holiday time, at Christmas or Easter. What happens, Alan? You close your eyes. If they feel that love's in the air, they, they start to march. My eyes are closed. I'm listening and loving. They're starting to march. The wooden soldiers, the beautiful dolls, the jacks in the box, they're all falling to the line. Oh, forward, forward, march! The whole room, the whole world is filled with love. Will you marry me? Mary? Oh, yes, dear Alan, but only back in Toyland. You pass it for me. 
lovely guest. We feel normal. We'll be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Polly Bear, Julie Bennett, Sam Edwards, Lou Merrill, and to all the members of our company. Babes in Toyland with book and lyrics by Glenn McDonough and music by Victor Herbert was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. And now, folks, here again is our charming guest, Miss Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon, and congratulations on the good news in the May issue of Radio TV Mirror Magazine. I see the readers have again voted the Railroad Hour as their favorite radio musical program. Well, that is good news, Lucille. And for myself, and on behalf of the entire cast, I certainly wish to thank the editors for conducting the poll and the readers of Radio TV Mirror Magazine for voting this honor to the Railroad Hour. It sure means a lot to us. Well, what's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, you just listen. on my hand. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite songs. Oh, it's mine, too. It's Vincent Newman's Unforgettable Smiles, Lucy. And Elaine Malvin will be here to play the title role. I'm sure everybody will have time on their hands next Monday night so they can listen. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucy. We're expecting you back again real soon. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, and smile on behalf of the rest of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend, Gordon McRae, saying bye. Babes in Toyland was presented by Special Arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads and reminding you... Some 23 million Americans now living will die of cancer if present rates continue. This must not happen. Each of us must help the American Cancer Society fight and conquer this dread disease. Mail your contribution to Cancer, C-A-N-C-E-R, care of your local post office. And now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribe. Keep tuned for the Pacific Telephone Hour with Eileen.